but a global recession is highly unusual and that appears to be what we're heading for so my forecast you know i i do update them but the, but big picture it goes as follows so what is j pal doing first of all march 1st 2022 the fed fund policy rate interest rates were zero and we're now at four and a half percent even in the volcker days we never went up four and a half percent in in 10 months not that fast um and so here we are so what is pal doing well He's given five speeches on the subject. I don't know why Wall Street doesn't listen, but he keeps trying. He said the same thing every time. He said, inflation is job one. We're just going after inflation. You know, believe us. Um, there is going to be a recession. Unemployment is going to go up. There's going to be pain. I, you know, I've never heard a Fed chairman use the word pain. He used it five times in one paragraph in the Jackson Hole speech. Um, and that's what we're doing. And, and, and believe us when we say it. Now, um, how long will he raise rates? How quickly? And, and what's he trying to do? Powell is trying to get to something that he calls the terminal rate. But the definition of the terminal rate is it's a rate that's high enough to cause inflation to come down on its own without further hikes. So uh, we'll get to a level and then inflation is coming down, by the way. And uh, in the last five months, it's gone from in the U.S., it's gone from about 9% to 8.7, 8.2, 7.4, 7.1. So it is coming down. Having said that, the target is 2% and 7.1 is still a far cry from two. So he's he's not there, but he's making progress. Now, so here's the, I hate to use the word conundrum, but it kind of is. Wall Street's saying, you're done. You, you, you did it, mission accomplished. Inflation is coming down. You got what you want to give it time. Stop raising rates, you're gonna kill the economy. But the Fed is saying, well, we actually don't know. We can't untangle it. Yes, inflation is coming down. That's objective. But is it coming down because we're still raising rates? Or is it coming down because we're at the terminal rate? Those are two different things. And right now, and this is what Powell's been saying, the Fed leans to the view that they're not at the terminal rate, that inflation is coming down because they're raising rates. They have not achieved the terminal rate. So my expectation is the Fed will raise interest rates 50 basis points on February 1st, and then probably 25 basis points in March. March 22nd is the Fed meeting after that. So those 75 plus the 450 we have now, that'll get you to five and a quarter. And even the hawk, more hawkish members think that that's probably the terminal rate. So, um, so Powell and the Fed have said, yeah, inflation is coming down, but it's because we're raising rates, not because we're at the terminal rate. We're going to get to the terminal rate, probably two more hikes, and then we'll pause. Um, and then and then if we're right, we'll just let inflation come down on its own. And that may take a year. So all this stuff about the Fed pivot and cutting rates and all that stuff. I mean, the Fed's thinking mid-2024 before they do that. Now, Wall Street are saying, no, you're not going to get that far. You may be at the terminal rate already. You're definitely cause a going to cause a recession. It'll be more severe than you think, uh, and rates are going to have to come down sooner than uh, uh, sooner than people expect. In other words, you've already achieved the terminal rate. You just don't know it, uh, and you'll probably be the last to know. So, with Wall Street, with the cheerleaders, you know, sending that message, but with some serious market indicators, including yield curves, sending that message. Why, why is Powell sticking to the game plan as I described it? And the answer goes back to uh, 1980, believe it or not, and what's called the Volcker mistake. People forget that there was a recession in 1980. It was sharp, but quick. It was over very quickly. It had nothing to do with monetary policy. The Carter administration issued some dopey regulation on a ceiling on credit card interest rates. And the industry said, fine, we're just not going to lend anybody any money. The economy fell instantly, kind of like a smaller version of what happened in 2020 with the with the uh, pandemic panic. Uh, and then they said, oh, sorry, just kidding. And then they took the ceiling off and then things got back to, to normal. Now, this was a time when farmers around the country were driving front loaders and tractors to Washington and they were circling the Fed building. And one guy drove his tractor up the steps of the Fed and he and Volcker was being burned in effigy. That I mean, that all happened. So uh, it was a little bit of pressure. And of course, Congress was up in arms and the White House was up in arms. So Volcker, uh, not quite panicked, but he cut interest rates seven percentage points, not not 
0.7, seven full percentage points to deal with the recession, which number one was unnecessary because the recession was caused by a policy blunder from the White House, which was quickly corrected. And number two, he had not won the fight against inflation. Well, after he cut rates and we came out of that very quick sort of snap recession, inflation got even worse. And that's when Volcker had to raise rates to 20%. And Volcker, in hindsight, and he said this in his last book, just before he died, um, he said, we, we shouldn't have done that. We should have stuck to our inflation mission. So now Powell, remember, Powell's not an economist. He's a lawyer. So he kind of thinks like a lawyer. I can relate to that, you know, looking at both sides. Powell does not want to be that guy. He does not want to be the guy who balks early and cuts rates, the famous Wall Street pivot, before the battle against inflation is won, because the outcome could be exactly what Volcker experienced, which is inflation wasn't done, doesn't go away, comes back stronger. And then you do have to destroy the economy, as we did in 1981-82. That was the worst recession. That was far worse than the little one in 1980. That was the worst since the Great Depression. We've managed to break that record several times since then. But at the time, that was horrific. But, but Volcker and others have said that was a blunder he never should have done. So Powell does not want to give up the rate hikes too early because he does not want to repeat the Volcker mistake. He does not want to be that guy. And that's what's driving him, even as Wall Street screams, you're already there. So so the question, so that's the lay of the land. There's the, there's the two competing sides. How does this play out? In my view, Powell probably is there. He probably is at something like a terminal rate. He probably doesn't have to raise interest rates anymore. He doesn't believe that himself. He um, His models tell him otherwise because they're relying on the Phillips curve, which is junk science. I mean, the last time I looked at a Phillips curve, it was flat. At least where I went to school, curve was curved. This, this thing is flat. There is no correlation between unemployment and inflation. There just isn't. But the Fed thinks there is. So I always tell people, don't... Um, if you want to forecast Fed policy and understand the Fed, don't think like a rational person. You have to think like the Fed. You have to get inside their heads or else you're going to get it wrong. So they're looking at unemployment, which is the lowest. The unemployment rate is the lowest since 1969. Well, if you believe in the Phillips curve, then that's a sure sign of inflation. As I say, even though it's coming down, it's still pretty high. So they, they think they have to keep fighting this fight. But here's here's what they're missing. Here's where it all falls down. Yeah, inflation as measured, CPI, PPI, you know, uh, personal consumption expenditure, core, non-core, year over year, the, there are like 20 different ways to measure it. Uh, it is it is coming down, but there are two sources of inflation. And it's gonna sound obvious, but you gotta separate them, the supply side and the demand side. They both result in price increases, but they have completely different dynamics. Supply side inflation is what we're seeing. It's what we saw in 1974 with the Arab oil embargo during the Arab-Israeli war when they cut us off from oil and, you know, you had to line up for gasoline. I lived through that, uh, you know, bare shelves and you couldn't get uh, certain things. It, was, it wasn't that every supermarket shelf was bare the way it was in East Germany in the 1950s, but something was always missing. And that's still the case today. So, of course, prices went up and, uh, you know, people were trying to pay whatever they had to to get what they needed. And energy prices were a big driver of that. So that feeds through as a form of inflation. The other kind of inflation is from the demand side. So the supply side is called um, a cost push. Costs go up and they push it onto the consumers. The other kind is from the demand side. It's called demand pull. Uh, and basically consumers have a change in mentality. They're worried about inflation. They would say, hey, you know, I was thinking about buying a refrigerator. Gee, I better go buy it today because if I wait for six months, the price is going to go up uh, or apply that to anything, a new dress, new suit of clothes, whatever. Um, and so you're pulling demand forward and it's behavioral. And that will also drive prices up. But they're very different things. Now, cost push can morph into demand pull. That's what happened in the 70s. It started from the supply side. But by the late 70s, 80s in Volcker, which we've just been talking about, it had tipped over into the demand side. That hasn't happened yet. We've had the supply side inflation, the cost push. It hasn't yet tipped into demand pull. It hasn't really affected consumer behavior that much in terms of uh, people anticipating more inflation. It could, but it hasn't happened yet. Here's why that's an important distinction. Cost push inflation negates itself. You know, the old saying that the cure for high oil prices is high oil prices because people can't afford it. Like, you know, maybe if demand is inelastic, if you got to fill up your Ford F-150 truck with gasoline to take the kids to school or go to work. But if you're unemployed, you're not buying any gas because you're not leaving the house. So, so it tends to negate itself, whereas demand pull 
feeds on itself. Pal has not made that distinction. And if 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 I'm right, and I think I am right, and the evidence 